What's up guys, Universal Mastery. So what we're gonna be doing in today's video is we are going to be continuing on this archetype series. So the archetype that we're gonna be talking about in today's video is going to be the Empress. If you wanna know more about the Empress, then stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing first, definitely make sure you go and check out my Patreon. On my Patreon, I have exclusive videos. Some of them are going to be geared towards actually getting your hands and feet wet with real spiritual practices. And then the other half are going to be more geared towards educational entertainment, just like this video. So where you're going to be able to find the Patreon is going to be the very first link at the description. So you click that, you click the description, you'll see that first link there that I'll take you to the Patreon. And in order to gain access to these exclusive videos that are not on my YouTube channel, and not going to be on my YouTube channel, they're only on my Patreon, you have to at least be a tier two member. So in order to be a tier two member, it literally costs $9.95 a month and that's a reoccurring payment. But if you actually do the math, that literally comes out to less than a dollar a day. And with the value that is on my Patreon right now, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to afford that. So just to give you a little bit of a heads up of what we're going over on the Patreon as of now, is we're talking about the Tree of Life, and I'm breaking down all of the different spheres on the tree so that you have a foundational understanding of what the Tree of Life actually is. Because I know there's a lot of people watching that have no idea. And what the Tree of Life is, just to give you a little bit of a hint, it is the absolute backbone of everything that is a cult. Okay, it is the, um, you could say it's the, the principles, it is the, it is the system that you can learn to understand the principles that govern everything in the universe and the laws that govern everything. So the more you understand the tree of life, the more you understand the spiritual aspects of life as well and the psychological, the mental, emotional, and all of those other things. Um, so yeah, definitely make sure you check that out. And then as you go up in tiers, there are di different benefits that are being offered as well. They get better and better and better. I'm going to let you check that out for yourself. And once again, when you click the description, you'll see the My Patreon link right there. Right below that link in parentheses, I want to give a special shout out to the top tier members of the Patreon. Um, so yeah, definitely check them out. Their names are going to be right there. And I just want to say a special shout out to you guys as well because I love all of you guys um, that are on the Patreon. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that we can we can all work together and I'm glad that I'm able to offer the value that I can. So other than that, I'm gonna go right into this video now. So first thing first, I'm not gonna explain too much about what these different pathways are. I did that in the, the first archetypal video, which was the archetype of the Joker. And then I talked a little bit about it in the next video, which is the archetype of the, um, I believe it was the archetype of the magician. And then the third, and then the, the, the path number two. So it goes zero, one, two. And then for path number two, I talked about the high priestess. So definitely start at the Joker. Start at the archetype of the Joker. If you're watching this now and you haven't seen the other ar archetypal videos, go to the Joker. Start from the beginning and then work your way down. So the way you're gonna be able to figure out the order to go in is it's, I, I put on the video, one for the Joker, I put start here. But then if you look at the, if you look at the end of the title, it says path zero. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna follow all the different paths you're going to want to follow it from path zero all the way down to 21, okay, and go in that order. Okay, so this is going to be path three right here. Okay, so I'm going to go right into it. This is the, this is the archetype of the Empress. So I'm going to read the notes and I'm going to share a little bit of my experience. So path three, the, the path of womb of life, the way of mother nature. Qualities, mother nature, femininity, creativity, art, music, design, attracting beauty, resolving motherly issues. Description, this path weds wisdom, father with understanding, mother. So what that means is that's connecting on the tree of life. So wisdom on the tree of life is going to be the sphere of Chokma and understanding on the tree of life is gonna be the sphere Bina. So this path is what connects both of those different spheres together. You can almost think of it as the pathway that connects your left brain with your right brain, bringing them into unity and balance, if you will. Okay, so 
It also unifies the undifferentiated right hemisphere with the logical left hemisphere of the brain. Venus reigns along this path. It represents fertility and mother nature, who provides for all sentient beings. It unites the feminine and masculine mind, tying together the father of the right pillar with the mother of the left under the eye of Venus. It is a doorway, the gate to life, associated with the third eye, intuition, and beauty. Creative and artistic people travel this path, but they must remember to create through the union of their imagination and their logical mind. The balance of right and left. So the affirmation of this pathway and of the archetype of the Empress is I am in the right place, doing the right thing at the right time. I am giving birth to a wonderful new aspect of my life, wedding my masculine and feminine sides of my personality. Okay? So the psalm of this path would be, remove from me the way of falsehood and grant me thy law graciously. Okay, the astrological aspect is going to be the planet Venus as well as what was mentioned in the description above. The tarot card is obviously going to be the Empress. Um, so here we go. So the Empress symbolizes motherhood, femininity, and marriage. This alluring entity governs the arts, music, colors, and harmony. She is Mother Nature and the untamed wilderness. She provides life, but she can also destroy it. Challenges, overindulgence, vanity, overconcerned with luxury, comfort, and material goods, materialistic. So let me say that again, overindulgence, vanity, overconcerned with luxury, comfort, and material goods, materialistic. Susceptible to overdependence on others, unpredictable, and unreliable. Okay, so the Hebrew letter is going to be Dalet which means door. And the door of life is the womb, the energy that connects the Supreme Father and Mother. Dalet functions as the vortex through which the potential becomes material. Okay, so now let me give you a little bit of an understanding of what it felt like actually working through this pathway. So when I was actually being influenced by this archetype, um, I was definitely, definitely, I felt that feminine energy. There was definitely a, a very strong sense of this feminine energy that was, you could say, just coursing through my, my body. And um, it definitely, what it, what it promoted in myself was a sense to be harmonious. Okay, so rather than trying to challenge people and rather than trying to get ahead of the game and, and being like 10 steps ahead of other people, which is something that I usually do, something that I usually like, you know, I, I, I look at life as, as a playing field and, you know, I like to, I like to progress at my own pace and have fun while I do it. But when I was working through this archetype, um, it was a very harmonious um, type of experience. So in other words, you know, whether I'm connecting with very masculine people or very feminine people, it was like I was always trying to be the counterbalance to what they were. So if there was an extremely masculine person that I was speaking to, then what I would bring to the situation was more of a feminine um, understanding, more of a feminine being. And if there was a really feminine person that I was conversating with and engaging with, then I would bring much more of a masculine wisdom to the table, a much more masculine presence. So basically what the sphere does is it trains you and it teaches you how to bring balance between in, I mean, once again, from your left and your right hemispheres of your brain, it brings that inner balance of your own masculine and feminine energy and it, and it teaches and shows you that you literally contain both of these different energies within your body. And just because you're a man or just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you're just masculine or you're just feminine. We literally have a balance of both of these energies in our bodies and we choose what we want to access. But during this sphere, during this influence of this sphere or of this path, excuse me, um, it was it was a really strong sense of just going between masculine and feminine, masculine and fem feminine. And by doing that, it really did create a union between them and it really did create a sense of harmony between them. Um, and then once again, you know, I would connect with other people that would be very masculine and then connect with other people that would be very feminine because 
as within, as without, I was also influenced, like my external reality was also influencing me based on this path working that I was, that I was undergoing. So because I was on this path, path three, the, the archetype of the Empress, connecting it back to the tarot, my external reality was actually showing me what that path was like. Your, your actual world around you will change and it will give you symbolism, it'll show you signs, it'll give you certain experiences, challenges, things in that nature that are correlated to that path. So um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was very interesting and it, it, you know, it's not, it's not an easy path because you're constantly trying to aim for that balance and that harmony. And obviously at the end of the day, it's, it's that harmony within yourself, but you're, you're also uh, the way that you can strengthen that harmony within yourself is by harmonizing with people outside of yourself. So as within, as without, as without, as within. So you're, you're constantly trying to harmonize with people. And as we all know, you know, in our society today, there's a lot of people that are out of balance and they don't have harmony in their life. So when you're taking on this path working, you are going to, when you become the empress, you are always trying to harmonize people. And it's, it's a power. I mean, it really is a power and it's a, it's a strong feminine power that, that ability to harmonize is a very feminine attribute, uh, at its basis. A masculine would be more like, this is what I'm doing. This is who I am. This is how I'm going to get there. But the feminine is like, well, I'm going to harmonize you. Um, so that, you know, that was another aspect of what I experienced. Um, and once again, you know, if you saw my previous video, I kind of gave you an understanding of how these, uh, these paths were manifesting in my day to day, day to day life. So during this time I was also, you know, I was still working at home Depot as at part time and sure enough, like manifested in my, you know, in my workplace, there was a man that played a very strong character of the, you could say the mat, the wise masculine, uh, fatherly, you could almost say guide energy and then there was this woman and they're both pr older way older than me and there was this woman that I worked with one during the day and then one during the night so I worked with this guy during the day up until nine and then I worked with this lady after nine up until um, typically like 10 or 11 um, and uh, and she was that feminine motherly nurturing type of energy so I literally got a balance of both of those and I got to see and learn from them and it was really I mean it was really profound um, so yeah so that also manifested you know during this time um, so like when I was working with that guy I was harmonizing with him you know he was more so of that masculine energy and I had to take on more of like that feminine understanding to you know kind of you know to connect and then when I was with that lady I had to kind of shift my energy into more of a masculine type of energy because she already naturally was a very feminine, uh, a very feminine person. So it really trained me and it taught me that there, you know, how to access these two energies within myself. And once again, it brought them into a better sense of balance. Um, let's see what else here. What else? Oh, and then this is also another sphere. It's something that you may have, um, you may come across, like if you have any motherly issues, meaning like. If whoever it is that's watching this, when you start to actually embody the Empress, if you have any issues in your family, like with your own mom and with your own mother, this, this pathway will actually start to heal that relationship between you two. So you will start to see all the virtues in your mother. Um, and your mother will naturally be influenced by this path as well. And she will start to see the virtues in you, whether you're a daughter or whether you're a son. Um, and you will be able to heal that relationship. And maybe it's not even your, your blood mother. Maybe it's just someone that you look at as a motherly figure. You're going to really be able to understand the nature of that motherly figure even more, which is going to cause you to respect, uh, her even more. Um, and then, and then you can, you know, heal that relationship. So this is another influence that this path has to offer and what the archetype of the Empress can do. Um, so Let's see what else. Okay, now let's let's go into. So I, I just covered the vices. Um, I mean, excuse me. I just covered the virtues. Now let me go into a little bit of the vices. So as very similar to the path before this one, path number two, which was the high priestess, there is a sense of you know codependency and dependency on others. And this one also kind of 
meshes in with that codependency. So you're, you are gonna feel a little bit more receptive than you typically usually do, which can make you more vulnerable to being a little bit extra dependent on people. Once again, you just want to be aware of that so that you don't overly put all your energy, all your trust, all your influence into somebody else and, and stop thinking for yourself. That's, you know, that's what you don't wanna do. Um, but you know, you are gonna feel a sense of extreme receptivity because that's what that feminine energy does. Um, and it, you know, you just want to be aware that you don't want to put too much energy into somebody else and, and, and make them the focal point of your life. Um, because then you will stop thinking for yourself and you'll stop looking inwards towards yourself. And then another one of the vices is the, the overindulgence aspect. So once again, connecting it back to the other path, path two, the high priestess, the empress also on, for one of the vices also has a an aspect of overindulging. And then with path two as the high priestess, there was addictions. So you want to be careful about trying to escape the experience because what it, what, it, you know, what this path can do is it can give you an urge or a sense of wanting to, you know, take certain types of substances to, to go in your own world. Because when you're in that really receptive, passive feminine state, remember feminine energy at its core is a negative energy. Negative and positive, that's not good and bad, okay? We have to make this clear. Negative is an extremely powerful energy, but at its core, it is a very fe it is a very negative energy. So when you're experiencing this strong feminine energy, it's not easy to transmute that negative, but that's, it's, it's an extremely powerful alchemical process that is under, that is at play when that happens. But once again, not a lot of people can actually handle that. That's why a lot of people don't know about, you know, what I'm talking about when it comes to different archetypes, when it comes to the tree, when it comes to actually walking down these paths and things like that. It's not an easy thing to do, but it can make you feel uncomfortable because that extreme floodgate of negative energy and passive, passive energy and uh, receptivity, uh, it can cause you to be very uncomfortable and want to escape that experience and go into like your own little your own little world and that's where you know certain substance abuse could come in whether that be marijuana whether that be alcohol whether that be kava kratom whatever whatever kind of thing it was for me it was a it was this um this specific drug called kratom and it's like a tea it's like a a plant made tea and i had to be very careful when i was using it because I could see that my body wanted to take more and it, I kind of wanted to get lost in it. And I had to balance that out. Um, and I could feel this urge to want to do it a lot, a lot, a lot. And I could see how it was negatively affecting my experience when I would do it too often. So I had to make sure I balance it. So just to give you a heads up, if you are experiencing the archetype of the Empress, just be aware that you are going to have a sense of probably wanting to somehow es escape pieces of that experience and if you have that feeling that's a normal feeling just be aware so that you can you know you don't let that happen you control your state and you let the, the process do what it has to do so that's another aspect and then once again you know another um, another vice is unpredictability because you know when you're in that extreme once again being filled with that extreme feminine energy you're just like yeah you know I'm living my life I'm doing what I'm doing you're very passive, you're bringing harmony. Someone may be like, hey, can you show up at this time, at this place, I need your help for this. And you may agree to it, and then you get caught up in what's going on. You know, you may get caught up in, in taking on that empress energy and you're conversating with people, you're harmonizing other people, and you completely forget. You completely forget that you had made a, a, a commitment to show up at a certain place at a certain time to help someone. So you wanna be aware that, you know, it's, it's hard it's, it's going to be a lot harder to be uh, extremely like you could say to, to it's going to be a little bit harder to follow your word. OK, because that feminine energy is just um, it's 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 just this once again, it's this receptive energy that just flows and goes with the process of mother nature. And it's just doing what it does. And then you have someone that says, I need you to be here at this time. And they put that masculine like. You could say um, they put that masculine order into play where they're like, I need you here at this time. Can you do it? And then that natural feminine motherly nurturing energy is like, no, you can't bound me. 
You know what I mean? You can't you can't put a box in, on me. Like I'm gonna do whatever I want. But then you know you got to be aware because remember this pathway is balancing the masculine and the feminine. So you may naturally feel like nah, I'm not gonna do it. I don't want to show up at that place at that time. And if that's how you feel and that's what you're gonna do, then tell the person no. I'm sorry, but I can't meet you there. I can't meet you at the time. Don't say you're gonna meet someone there and then you're gonna meet them at that time and then not show up. That's where the vice would come in. That would be the unpredictability and that would be unreliable of you. Um, so just be honest. That's that's honestly the key. Be honest and, and remember that you are gonna probably find yourself in certain experiences and situations that may require you to use extra willpower to follow what it is that you say you're going to do or at least be honest and tell people that you're not going to do something that you know you're not going to follow through on. So other than that guys, that's going to wrap it up. This is the archetype of the Empress. Once again, it is a very, very extremely feminine type of embodiment mixed with a masculine touch to it bringing your feminine and your masculine energies into a harmonious balance and you're going to be experiencing a lot of harmonizing a lot of connecting with both types of energies feminine masculine feminine masculine and you're going to find a nice beautiful union between both of them and you're going to see how they both connect together you may come across other people that talk about marriage um, and just things in that nature. You're gonna, you're actually gonna, you're gonna see some deep truths about how a, a successful relationship can actually happen. So once again, that's gonna wrap it up. I'm glad with what I shared. If you like this video, then definitely go down and hit the like button. That's right there. Then come over here, hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed. Then hit that notification bell that's right above that subscription button because I post videos as often as I can. Okay, and we're we definitely are continuing on this series of the archetypes uh, And once again where you're gonna be able to find my patreon is right in my description So you're gonna click my description It's gonna be that first link at the top click that link and then you can sign up for the patreon if that's something that you're interested in um, Then go to the second link below It's gonna take you to the Streamlabs merch where you can play it place an order for a Hecate sigil shirt you'll place your order and they will literally ship it right to your door just like Amazon Prime. Then go to the third link below that's gonna take you to the Facebook community. On Okay, so when you click that link and you go to the Facebook community, you're gonna see a pin post up there that says private group. Click that, request to join, and I'll add you in. Okay, what I do on there is I post a little bit of extra content in the form of written and in the form of quotes. So definitely tune in for that. Once I get, you know, once I get at least like 50 people in that group, I'm gonna be posting consistently. Um, right now we're getting there. We're we're some we're we're close to like 20. So other than that, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.